Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today, working on the Mini Cooper here gives me the perfect opportunity to answer some questions on how I approach different materials on the exterior of cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Even though it's this tiny, it has a ton of different materials on the exterior of the Cooper here. From vinyl to painted surfaces, chrome, plastic, plastic trim, two different types of black piano finish on the top of the roof mirrors, A, B's, and C pillars, and just about any other substrate you can think of. So, forgive the pun, but we're going to do a mini-series covering the subject today. The car has some miles on it, uh, some swirls here and there, some nicks, some bumps, some bruises, but it's really not in that bad of shape. We're going to turn it around. It's not going to take us long. The car has been washed. It has been decontaminated. We're going to bring it in and start the claying process. When it comes to clay, I only clay where and when I feel it's needed. If I could feel contaminants on the paint and it's real uh, bumpy and feels gritty, I'm going to grab the clay bar and I'm going to remove that. This vehicle here has medium to soft clear, leaning a little bit towards soft. The top black piano finish on the roof and the mirrors is very soft. And then you have the A, B, and C pillars, which is extremely soft. The clay bar... Well, the clay bar I choose for just about any vehicle, doesn't matter what type of paint it has, is always going to be mild. I don't want to braid the paint anymore and, and cause more work than I will already have to do to a lot of these vehicles. And the mild clay normally gets rid of everything I'm looking to remove when it comes to bonded contaminants. And here you can see some stuck to the clay bar. When it comes to the clay lube, don't overthink it. Uh, water is a natural lubricant, so use ONR, use uh, dedicated clay lubes. I'm using Max Shine right here, but just pick really anything. Water will do fine. There are bug splatter etches and some contaminants that I'm going to have to grab the Citral 266 and even some of the uh, new Goof Off Pro aerosol can to remove them. That's exactly what I'm going to do for the next step. I want to get rid of all that stuff before I start to correct. Stubborn bug splatter, tar, paint transfer, everything that is similar to that will be removed with the citral, with the goof off aerosol, and a microfiber towel. These two chemicals are quite potent. When I'm finished, I'm going to return and go over the areas where I used the Citral 266 and the Goof Off, and I'll flush them. I'll use uh, a rinseless wash or just a spray bottle with uh, fresh water. Rinse the areas, flush them, and get rid of any residue from those chemicals so they're not dwelling on the paint. Here are a few examples of what I'm looking for circling the car with these two chemicals. When I'm satisfied that all of these are removed, it's time to do a little protecting of the vehicle before correction. And that means wheel covers for the wheels and tires. They're clean and there will be uh, some use of the rotary. There'll be wool and a little bit of grit from polishing compounds flying around. And I don't want to go over my work again. And how about these trim pieces here? They're textured. They do get stained easily. Let's protect them. There are a lot of detailers on YouTube that refuse to take the time to protect protect those areas. I'm not one of them. I suggest you not to be one of them as well. Protect your backside. Don't let crazy repairs cut into your profit. The type of protection for the plastic trim will be 3M Precision Poly Tape today. This is a highly conformable tape. It's good tape and off-label use is important too. 
and it doesn't remove too many hairs while removing from the face. Okay, moving right along. For what it's worth, my son read that the tape has a seven-day clean removal, which means you could stick it onto the surface for seven days in any weather. It will remove cleanly without any adhesive, and I guess he wanted to test that on my head. Very important to protect the edges of these vinyl stripes. They can lift. If you're going to bump up the uh, wool pad or a foam pad from a polisher up against an edge, it can lift, it can damage. Let's protect them as well. We'll come back to them later. I'll explain exactly what I use to clean them up. They can be improved. If you look closely, you'll see I'm running the tape way out past the edge of the vinyl. That way, if we do bump up against it with a pad, any pad, it will hit the tape and not the edge of the vinyl. I'll do that with all of the trim pieces. That little fragment of paint that's not corrected because of that, it's not going to hurt anything. Everything is now protected. Let's get this correction going. We're going to start with the top, of course, and work our way panel by panel down to the bottom of the car, starting with the black piano finish on the roof here. It's on the mirrors as well, and it's very, very soft. I get a lot of questions on these and A's, B and C pillars, how to correct them, take care of them, uh, and also just wipe them down without marring them. To start the project, you want to grab a few things, a few microfibers. Mine are 500 GSM. They are edgeless, nice, and plush, and soft to wipe off the residue from the polishes, the compounds, and not remar the surface you spent all that time correcting. The polisher is going to be a Max Shine 21 millimeter. I have hundreds of corrections on this thing, and it just ticks along, doesn't miss a beat. Uh, the pad is a Lake Country white foam pad, and this is the, uh, it's a non-aggressive um, it's a foam polishing pad, finishing pad. Uh, when you're working on these surfaces, you can use the black application pad. You can use the blue or the white one here. Most lines, they will have a little bit of a similar pattern when it comes to color, but there are some differences. So you do have to look out. Blue uh, will be maybe finish or polish, depending on the line you're working with. So just pay attention when you order them. Don't be freaked out when you see a little bit of transfer coming from these surfaces. Some of the clear is tinted, and there's just some natural transfer from some of the substrates you'll be working on. I'm using the Profiline uh, Perfect Finish from Sonax. They have a 1 to 6 on their correction cream when it comes to aggression. Uh, the aggression of cut is a 3 or 4, and the finish is 6. This works very well on this type of surface teamed up with this pad. Polisher speed set on the third speed setting. Arm movement is fluid. Keep your arm moving and not a ton of pressure. You want to keep the temperature and the heat down in that pinpointed area where you're working and correcting. Wiping off the product and the residue from the polish will be with one of these edgeless 500 GSM soft plush microfibers. Normally, I like to wipe off polish residue or waxes and sealants with a low pile. That is not a recommendation I would make here. That brought out a ton of gloss, getting rid of some of the swirls and scratches up in the roof here. The only thing left over are some paint chips and nicks. We'll take care of that with the, uh, some OEM touch-up and the little cup and pin tool that I have. Works fantastic. You just have to have a little bit of patience. Fill and then wait and fill and wait until it's up to the level where you're satisfied that that chip will look good once you do a little bit of wet sanding, color sanding, and then polishing. No brush strokes like you're trying to recreate the Mona Lisa here. This is just dabbing a little bit of the paint into the uh, crater of the chip, similar to how a tattoo artist uses his tools. 
If you want to get these areas looking a little bit better than a quick fix, you're going to have to have a little patience. You need to fill and then let that OEM paint cure properly. If you try to work it too soon, you'll just lift it right back out of the crater or the valley of the chip. Working our way down to the painted surfaces, we still have the pillars to do yet and the mirrors. Again, soft finish. We're going to use a 3-inch polisher. This is the Flex XFE 83-inch polisher. We're using, uh, we're going to stick with the perfect finish from Sonax. And I have a microfiber polishing pad attached to the polisher. Wipe off the residue and using a shop light or natural light, check your work. Hopefully you're satisfied with a pass or two because there's not a ton of material or clear on top of this uh, piano finish here. So don't remove too much. Moving on to the mirrors. That will do it. I did notice a few chips on the mirror. Not a very good idea for the engineers to put this type of finish on mirrors, but uh, what are you going to do? Let's jump back, take care of the C pillars, and we're ready to work on the red paint. That will do it for today's video. We have the top half of the car finished. We're going to take care of the red uh, Hey, still plenty of different types of materials to work on in this car. I will cover them all. Love you guys. Catch you in the next video.